Good afternoon, students. So, I think in the last session, uh, we were talking about uh, various relationships of this transmission line. So, till now, what we have studied is, I guess in the last class, uh, we ended up finding a relationship between this V0 minus and V0 plus. So, let me uh, rephrase, uh, let us, let us, uh, look into what we are trying to see here so the thing is so when we had a line like this so if there is a wire and in order to account for all kind of uh, transit time effects we have developed something called transmission line analysis right and uh, and in this analysis, what we have seen is the voltage at any point on the line, OK, so just V of Z, and we imagine this is Z axis, or the current at any point on the line, or in the form of waves. And we saw that we had expressions like uh, V0 plus into e power minus gamma Z plus V0 minus into e power uh, plus gamma z means you have we can have a both a forward wave as well as a backward wave okay so a wave in the sense a wave of voltage or a wave of current right so these are all phasor notations so the equations which i'm writing here are in phasor format of course if you want to convert them into time domain format simply always multiply it with e power j omega t and take a real part of it and we see we saw that a current can also have a forward and a backward wave and they are related like by like this like v naught by z naught e power minus gamma z minus of uh, v naught uh, minus divided by z naught e power plus gamma z for backward wave right and we had these relationships like gamma is given by square root of the system parameters or this uh, line parameters transmission line parameters and frequency Whereas the Z naught is given as a square root of uh, R plus J omega L divided by G plus J omega C. So these are the things which we have seen. And after that, what we have done is we wanted to know what is the relationship between this. So in order to complete this analysis, basically I need to find these constants also. So because I don't have the answers of these constants, so I started uh, digging into it. So how do you get these constants? So what we came to know that is if you, in order to estimate these values, of course, if you want constants in your solutions of uh, differential equations, uh, definitely you need to substitute some boundary conditions. So what is a boundary? So here you can see the wave is transmitting, they're traveling on a line with a characteristic impedance of Z naught. Definitely the boundary, you can have two kinds of boundaries. And we had seen that one boundary is the load and another boundary will be the generator. OK. So what we have done? So instead of taking both at the same time and doing the analysis, first we have taken a step, one step at a time, so that I have taken that, say, the transmission line is of some length L. So this line is of some length L. And uh, here is my load. ZL load is here, which is connected at the end of the transmission line. And I, I took, in order to make the analysis easier, OK, so which I have called as load-centered analysis. So load-centered analysis implying that that uh, you're, uh, so you're taking z equal to 0 at load. So this analysis, we call it as load-centered analysis. So simply, instead of uh, thinking that source is at some 0 and load is at some length, load is length L grundi, source is minus L. Okay. So at Lanukunapudu, we have seen that we got few equations, interesting equations. Uh, the first one is because we have a forward wave and a backward wave, we initially defined something called reflection coefficient. So the reflection coefficient is uh, is always given as at any at any point on the wire, right? At any point on the wire, 
we had the reflection coefficient uh, given as uh, the forward wave that is v plus of z divided by the backward wave v minus of z and we have that as uh, from this this becomes your forward wave so this is your forward wave and this is your backward wave okay so when we substituted them we got an answer like uh, v naught plus sorry i'm sorry my bad so reflection coefficient is like uh, reflected wave divided by the I means uh, for incident wave so it's a backward wave divided by the forward wave so it is v naught minus uh, divided by v naught plus into e power plus 2 j i mean not j so you have uh, gamma here let me write it here e power uh, no or gamma and you have uh, to gamma z okay so this is what you have so we, we started to do analysis at the load so the question was what is the reflection coefficient at the load so the reflection coefficient at the load is nothing but reflection coefficient uh, at z equal to zero okay so you can see that if you put z equal to zero in this equation we got this that the reflection coefficient at the load is nothing but v naught minus by v naught plus so this is one equation so from this equation if i know the reflection coefficient at load then i can write that v naught minus is nothing but tau time tau l times of v naught plus so i got one relationship which relates v naught minus and v naught plus and from here, what we have done is, what is this V0 minus by V0 plus ratio? We try to calculate this ratio by taking another condition that we know that because at Z equal to 0, okay, so at Z equal to 0, if you ask me what is the load on the line, right? The load on the line at any point Z is nothing but voltage at that, the total voltage at that point divided by the current at that point right so this is called line impedance right so if i put uh, z equal to 0 in this so z the line impedance at z equal to 0 should be equal to the load impedance zl so when we have when we equated it so because if i put the total voltage in in the total voltage if i put z equal to 0 you get v naught plus uh, by v naught minus divided by v naught plus minus v naught minus divided by z naught so from here we got the this expression that v naught minus by v naught plus is equal to z l minus z naught divided by z l plus z naught okay which is nothing but your reflection coefficient of l so this is another important formula which you need to remember probably uh, when you're solving the transmission line problems so so what is the, what are the important things here we need to take out from our analysis so man analysis lo enti ante mother transmission line ki a line med unde waves anan kabatti aa waves ki voltage current expressions ela untayo telusukunnamu aa expressions lo naaku anni telusu gamma ante telusu i know what is gamma here you can see i know gamma i know z not okay the only thing that is left to find this and the equations ni fulfill cheyali mottham differential equations raavali ante ante line med a point daggara voltage current raavali ante i need to mention v not plus and v not minus okay so to get this v not plus and v not minus i have employed some boundary conditions and you can see that the first thing i got is this that v not v not plus telusthe v not minus telisipothadi v not minus telusthe v not plus telisipothadi i don't have to calculate both okay i can just calculate one value and then i can get the other value okay and more interestingly how do you get this uh, towel and towel is nothing but if i know the value of the load and if i know the value of the characteristic impedance i can simply do this zl minus z naught by zl plus z naught and i can get the answer so and then i go load there is the jalo if i know the load i can easily calculate what is the value of uh, the reflection coefficient towel okay and i can easily calculate what is the relationship between v naught minus and v naught plus say for example okay say for example uh, i have a situation like uh, 
let me take a, a load so I have a line like this and say the transmission line is having a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms okay and say this is connected to a load of 100 ohms okay so then what is the value of a reflection coefficient at load and yes one by three sir very good now so it is zl minus z0 gabati so zl value here so you can see this is zl and this is z0 so zl minus z0 divided by zl plus z0 so you can see that reflection coefficient is 1 by 3 so and if tau l is 1 by 3 what does that mean that means v0 minus is 1 by 3 times of v0 plus okay so if you if you know the values okay and then you reflection coefficient value there is there you can easily calculate the relationship between v0 minus and v0 plus okay sir either you tell me that voltage and current equations low the voltage and current equations low what equation tells the jaw and haru and the walk v0 plus or v0 minus tells the jar if i know the value of load load value tells the mara and the law what the other v0 minus and v0 plus and a lot of talent obviously you need to substitute the other boundary condition that is a source condition okay but before substituting that source condition and getting a value for v0 plus what we will do is we'll try to calculate some other interesting things that we'll get uh, from this load centered analysis okay so what are the other things we can get from this load centered analysis and uh, the line impedance so let me calculate the line impedance here so let me take back my transmission line again here so here is my transmission line okay uh, so transmission line and taken in common got two wire line this could now you can also do the same analysis with the coaxial cable or a twisted wire the analysis is valid for any kind of uh, transmission line right so because two wires are more easy to understand for us so i'm going with the two wires okay so this is zl okay so you basically on z axis like this and uh, this is z equal to zero point and this point let us say this is okay so this point is z equal to minus l indicating that this length is of l and let us imagine the characteristic impedance is z not okay so now the question is what is the value of impedance at any point on the line so z of what i want to find is what is the value of impedance at any point of the line so this is a very bad kind of notation but what can i do uh, so z and a imp impedance on a z, z and are the coordinate actually okay so small in the bracket is a coordinate so because this is z axis so different values of uh, z right you have different values of impedance because at different points you have different voltages at different points on the line you have different current values so what is the value of voltage at different points on the line so voltage is nothing but v naught so before writing this voltage let me write the expression for voltage here so in the moment that rasna put voltage expression at last and i wrote it like v naught plus e power plus uh, sorry minus gamma z plus v naught minus of e power minus of i mean plus of gamma z so this is a far forward wave and this is your backward wave I think it could have because we had one relation, one new relationship that is we can replace uh, V naught minus with uh, reflection coefficient at load times V naught plus. If I do that, what happens to the expression of V of Z? So you can see the V of Z exp expression becomes like this V naught plus into E power minus gamma Z plus the L times of V naught plus into E power plus gamma Z. So in this expression, say for example, if I take uh, uh, V naught plus okay into E power minus gamma Z as common, what you'll get? You'll get answer as one, right? So I'm taking this as common. 
if you take that as common, then you get 1 plus 12 times of uh, e power plus 2 gamma z. Right? You can see, I multiply it, then you get back the same expression again. So this is v of z. Okay, so let us try to write expression for i of z. So if you remember previously, we had this expression for i of z like this. i of... Uh, Okay, i of z, we had expression like this, that is v0 plus into e power minus gamma z. Divided by z0 minus v0 minus uh, divide into e power plus gamma z divided by z0. So you can see I can use the same equation again. I can use the same equation again in this analysis also. Okay, if I do that, then what happens is I get my expression like this. I say that i of z is equal to v0 plus into e power minus gamma z divided by z0 into 1 minus tau l into e power plus 2 gamma z. Okay, so you can see that if I substitute, if I if you multiply it, you get back your expression for i of z. So from now onwards, whenever I have the, uh, I had to take these expressions. So these are the expressions which I'm going to use because why do we have to write again v naught minus and multi right and say for example, I have the knowledge of the reflection coefficient at the load. So, and because I know that the reflection coefficient at the load is nothing but zl minus z naught divided by zl plus z naught. Okay, so I have the knowledge of the reflection coefficient at load. So I'm going to write my voltage expressions and current expressions like this, which are what I'm going to use from now onwards. So let us write them again. Okay, so that you get a practice of it. Uh, oh, I think my diagram is gone, but let me draw it again. So your load is at z equal to zero. I mean, this is your z axis. And we imagine this is at z equal to minus L point. That makes your wire is of length uh, L and this is of Z naught. Okay. So what we want to find is the line impedance. That is Z of Z at any point is nothing but V of Z divided by A of Z. And if you remember, we had the expressions for V of Z and A of Z. What are those expressions? That is V naught plus into e power minus gamma z times of 1 plus reflection coefficient tau l into e power minus 2 gamma z okay. divided by. Okay, then you put these are the things which I have to remember. Plus, plus, the things which you have to remember. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, plus. Thanks, Ram. So, what what things you need to remember another you know i'll timely uh, inform you that these are the things which you need to remember for your exams or for the purpose of solving problems and all so those things you remember okay but uh, remaining things are uh, like for the purpose of proof okay there is no need of biharting every step okay it's always better to solve and uh, remember the procedure so that is what i always suggest so this is the expression for current, which is 1 by tau l e power plus 2 gamma z. Okay. So if you see, I can cancel out this uh, v0 plus. Okay. This term and this term gets cancels out. And uh, I have the answer of uh, z0 times of uh, 1 plus tau l times e power plus 2 gamma z divided by 1 minus uh, tau l e power plus 2 gamma z. Okay, I can still simplify this. I can uh, substitute that because tau l is nothing but zl minus z0 by zl plus z0. Maybe I'll write it somewhere else. 
it is right here so we know that reflection kota well is nothing but zl minus z0 divided by zl plus z0 okay so this is something which you need to remember okay so if i put that towel value here okay what happens you get something as z0 into okay uh i can write it as you get uh, 1 plus uh, zl minus z0 divided by zl plus z0 into e power plus uh, 2 gamma z okay uh, divided by 1 minus of course the same factor zl minus z0 divided by zl plus z0 into e power plus 2 gamma z okay so it is a very big number to look at but what you have to do we have to solve it, obviously okay there is no simple shortcut here okay so if you if you write it so ikkada your denominator lo zl plus z0 vastadi and uh, numerator lo ni denominator lo ni zl plus z0 zl plus z0 cancels out and when you multiply this factor with this one okay and if you take zl as common in those things you can see that you get zl into 1 plus e power 2 gamma z and uh, you have uh, if you take z0 common you have z0 times of uh, 1 minus e power 2 gamma z okay and in the denominator what you are getting you are getting zl times of uh, 1 minus uh, e power 2 gamma z and uh, you have plus uh, z0 times of uh, 1 minus uh, i'm sorry 1 plus uh, e power 2 gamma z okay so what is this value so the value ikkada chotaanike chaala bhayankaram ga sir enti expression unde inde an gurtu pettukovali ante obviously ee type of expressions gurtu pettukovali vastadi kabatte dan inka simplify chestan okay so that it be, it 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 adjusts in our memory okay so probably ikkada tho aapesan ankonde this formula almost takes around oka 1 mb memory ayina teesukuntade mo man brain lo oka 1 kb memory waste ayipothe so inka shorten cheyadam so so that it is very small and cute so that you can remember it okay but you definitely have to remember this formula so that is why i'm deriving it here also so ikkada nenu em cheyachante one thing i can do is i can take something common here but before taking common let us uh, uh write few things here on the side pakkana konni equations raadam so that uh, you two will also appreciate it so manam chinna pu nerchukuna trigonometry ok sari gurthu cheskundam what is cos hyperbolic gamma z can you write it in exponentials sir e power Anyone? gamma z plus e power minus gamma z but very good e power gamma z plus e power minus gamma z by 2 okay and what is sin h gamma z minus of sir e power gamma z minus e power minus gamma z by 2 okay you get a minus so if i divide this so basically if i divide sin by cos i get it tan right so if i ask you what is tan of it tan hyperbolic of uh, gamma z then that simply becomes uh, you have a uh, power minus term but what i will do is uh, i'll take uh, e power okay mundu direct ga rasedlandi maybe i think i don't have any space here maybe i'll write it here itself okay so maybe ikkada raddam so what is 
tan hyperbolic of uh, gamma z rastanamu so from the equation i can see that this should be equal to e power gamma z minus e power minus gamma z place like that divided by e power gamma z plus e power minus gamma z okay so what if i take uh, e power uh, minus gamma z as common in the numerator and denominator then i'll get e power 2 gamma z minus 1 divided by e power 2 gamma z plus 1 okay so i hope you can understand where i'm going with this okay so in this equation in this equation uh, if i take uh, 1 plus e power gamma z common in the numerator and 1 plus e power gamma z in the denominator okay what happens uh, you get uh, the equation like this because there is one minus here you can take minus common then this becomes e power minus of e power 2 gamma z and at the end i can write it as minus of e power 2 gamma z minus 1 and ras coach together so when i take uh, this term as common uh, in the numerator and denominator i guess you get an equation like this so z not times of zl minus z not tan times of hyperbolic of gamma z function divided by zl times of uh, or because you are taking this as common you get z not times plus oh, sorry with a minus sorry minus uh, zl times of uh, tan of hyperbolic of gamma z function i think now it looks a little bit smaller than this big one okay so do i have to remember this one and uh, not it okay inga apde avasaram ledhu but because this is a formula which is derived for a transmission line which is lossy because here gamma is a complex number that is you have both alpha plus j beta right so alanti scenario lo at any point on the line i have this equation this is the equation for at any point on the line so let me dial down my analysis usually enti ante most of the time the problems which we deal with most of them are loss less only lossy lines deal jam ekku usually we don't deal with them but practically we always have lossy lines only and also i told you that if you can make a situation where omega l is very much greater than r and omega c is very much greater than uh, g then you can almost approximately have lossy lines loss less lines right so let us uh, go back here okay and let me derive the same line impedance if i am dealing with a lossless scenario okay so if i am dealing with a lossless scenario okay so so now it is say it is uh, lossless if it is lossless gamma ante en substitute cheyali gamma is usually alpha plus j beta but because it is lossless alpha should be equal to 0 or to say gamma is nothing but alpha times uh, j times of uh, beta so for our transmission line okay which is like this and uh, which is terminated with a load zl and uh, which is on the z axis at z equal to 0 point and whose length uh, is z equal to minus l and uh, this length of the line is l and this is z not right so if you are dealing with the lossless line the other thing which you know is z not is a real number and you know the value of it also z not is what square root of l by c which you get so these are the things we know if you are dealing with the lossless line so if you are dealing with the lossless line the line impedance so line impedance z of z which is nothing but v of z divided by a of z 
initially it was like this for a loss c line initially we got the answer like this that is z not times of uh, we had z not into zl minus uh, i think we had what uh, j times of uh, no j sorry zl minus uh, z not tan hyperbolic function of uh, gamma z divided by z not minus uh, zl times of tan hyperbolic function of uh, gamma z i hope that is what we have uh, Yeah, so it is ZL minus Z0 and Z0 minus ZL. Oh, where is the slide? I think I lost my slide somewhere. Okay, here it is. Okay, so this slide will end up because gamma is now what gamma is uh, J beta. And here I'm going to use one trigonometric property that that is tan hyperbolic function of uh, uh, complex number. Okay, say tan h of uh, j theta is nothing but j times of uh, tan theta. Do you think it works out like that? Yes, sir. Yes, it works out. You can check out in this in that monetization proof log or So if I do that, so here gamma and in replace s and in place of gamma. So I can say wherever you have tan hyperbolic function of gamma is j beta times of z. Okay, is nothing but a j times of tan beta z. Okay, so this part is what. Uh, so this part is your gamma okay i'm sorry that is not gamma this part is your gamma and uh, this is tan beta times of j beta so you can see that wherever i have a uh, higher tan uh, hyperbolic function if it is a lossless line i can replace this value here with simply tan of uh, j times of uh, tan of uh, beta z and j times of uh, minus j times of tan of beta z okay so this is the expression of line impedance at any point on the line line may the a point the grana line impedance the relationship maintain just then either Usually, we are not interested about the impedance at any point on the line. Line made prati chota and impedance on the other hand, the most interesting thing that we want to study is what is the input impedance of this line. Say, if I want to connect a generator here, if this generator has to deliver a maximum amount of power, then that definitely depends upon what kind of input impedance you can see at this point. E point the girl may convince input impedance and then it depends on that network theory and yet on the because if you remember network theory if you ask me it log a wire on the wire kiss at all in a load connection what is that in and end up there you much love wire like wire resistance ledu do a million ago but a simply said in is equal to zl under that is what we do in the network theory but after studying this much of effects and uh, waves and all we definitely can't say that zn equal to zl in fact it will not be equal you will see that what is zn so what is input impedance of the line and if i'm standing at the initial point of the line and if there is a voltage and current waves and if i ask me what is the input impedance at this line so e location the graph so what i'm asking you what is a line impedance at z is equal to minus l so z is equal to minus l in a location the graph input impedance and the impedance and then i'll or the name input impedance jet in and plus what is it so on the jet plus lanes up should jail minus l battle so tan of minus negative number you know the day minus 10 minus 10 okay so you get z not times of uh, jet l plus j z not 
tan beta L divided by ZL, sorry, Z naught plus uh, JZL tan beta L. Okay. So, what does this say? This tells you that load ninchi wakwala nu L and a units distance again walk just if you walk a units of L distance at that location. What is the impedance you see towards the input? Input the grand impedance can be said that if you are looking into that line at that length L, how much impedance you will see? And it depends upon the length of the line. It depends upon the characteristic impedance of the line. So it is not simply like network theory. Jab na tega jadan is called jadal gaadu. It launder. And it depends on the length. So tan function can go from infinity to minus infinity. So you can never estimate. It depends on the length. You can get any kind of value. So we will see some expressions. And the atla effect just so that I tell you, we will see some expressions now. Of course, we are dealing with lossless line. Lossless line key. So this is the equation for lossless line. And I can tell you that this. Is the most important expression for all kinds of uh, bits you see in your competitive exam and uh, whatever exams you may win for your discrete exams and problems which you are dealing. Okay, so I definitely urge you uh, if you have a paper before you know, so why don't you write the formula at least uh, two or three times by reciting it? Okay, so paper me erugundu paper unte paper this is J n is equal to Rand. And just don't turn Rand one. J n is equal to Z not into Z L plus J Z not tan beta L divided by Z not plus J Z L tan beta L. So, rasta na puru you adi chadu tu randi you write it for two or three times. Okay. Z uh, n is equal to Z not into Z L plus J Z not tan beta L divided by Z not plus J Z L tan beta L. Mali Z n is equal to Z not into Z l plus J Z not tan beta l divided by Z not plus J Z l tan beta l. Yendu ki formula ng gurthu bhetko mahna nante because it is not that you cannot derive it, but the derivation of it takes a lot of time. Instead of uh, deriving this whole expression to solve problems, usually people remember this formula. Okay, so. So I hope uh, you two will remember this formula because this is a very important formula. We'll be using it again and again and again and again. Okay, right. Being said that, so let us. Uh, so this is what we have. Your input impedance is given as Z n is equal to Z l plus J Z not tan beta l divided by Z not plus J Z l tan beta l. Okay. So let us first uh, take a scenario here. Okay, very interesting scenario. So now they created a transmit log wire. Under that, I had a wire. Okay, and say the wire is of some length L. And here, what someone engineer said, "Ante, this wire net la short circuit chase sir." What they have done? They have short circuited the wire. So my question is. What will be the input impedance if I look into this terminals? If terminals look just now, put input impedance and don't add in. Network theory, network theory, what are we doing? Zero. Zero. Because short circuit implies that it is a zero impedance, so network theory dictates that it should be a zero impedance. But if your line is comparable to wavelength, the line and the wavelength is comparable, what are we doing? अब क्रांसीटम एफेक्ट अवी उबी कम एंटे ना हाउ डू गेट इनपुट इंपडें सो रईट द फार्मला जेड एन इज ईक्वल टू वाट जेड एन इज ईक्वल टू वी क्यार्टरिस्टिक इंपडें जेड नाट सो इपू जेड नाट तो स्टार्ट जेड नाट इंटू इंक मिगली जेडल का जेड नाट इंटू जेड एल प्लस जे जेड नाट टैन टाइम आफ बीटा एल डिवेड बै Z so then it reverses out of that now so that is Z not plus J Z L tan times of beta L so that is how you can remember okay so the formula I say in this case because it's a short circuited one implies Z L equal to zero if Z L is zero if I substitute Z L zero here you put this term as zero and you put here this term as zero what happens you simply get J Z not 
tan times tan. of beta l you get zn is equal to and input impedance atla untadi ante this input impedance looks like j times of z not times of tan beta l so do you think uh, it's it looks like a resistive load or a reactive load or it looks like a inductive short load. circuit or an open circuit inductive load okay definitely it looks it looks like jxl okay you think that it is an inductive load but tan can be both a positive beta. and a negative number right because yes. uh, tan function tan of some angle can be a negative number also if it is a negative number it looks like an inductive load it looks like a capacitive load right so if you because you know the tan function looks like this so tan function teeskunnaru ankonde uh it can be positive it can be negative okay so tan uh, tan of theta ante ikkada theta ante is beta l so beta l anadi zero nunchi pi by 2 madhyalo undanu kondi then tan function will be a positive number you can see that then uh, then the load looks like an inductive load okay ante నీ నీవు ట్రాన్స్ నీవు ఒక వైర్ తీసుకుని ఈ వైర్ని ఇక్కడ షార్ట్ సర్క్యూట్ చేసావు అనుకో నీకు ఇన్పుట్ దగ్గర ఒకవేళ ఈ లెంగ్త్ ఎఫ్ దిస్ లెంగ్త్ ఇస్ సచ్ దట్ బీటా ఎల్ ఈజ్ లెస్ దాన్ ఫైవ్ బై టూ దెన్ ది ఇన్పుట్ ఇంపుడెన్స్ బిహేవ్స్ లైక్ ఏ ఇండక్టివ్ లోడ్ or uh, when it behaves like an inductor right this is a very bold and very interesting statement endukante chinna appudu nunchi manaku network theory lo gaani eppudaina chustunna appudu inductor ante eppudu idigo ila wire la ila chodithane inductor ani vaallu kaani nenu ikkada inductor etla tayar chestunnanu ante simply oka length line length teeskunnanu whose line length beta into l annadi pi by 2 kante takku vachala teeskunte if i just simply short circuit the wire then even the input behaves like an inductor ante oka inductor voltages ni currents ni atla ayithe manipulate chestadu ee input terminal daggara the voltage and current relationship will have the same effect okay oka inductor oka palana inductor atla ayithe behave chestadu adhe inductance vache laga i can manipulate the length of the line and i can make it to behave in the same way ante voltage ki current ki madhya adhe relationship vachala tayar chechu and it is an equivalent inductive effect there is no windings or anything okay for example if i make my line length even larger such that beta l falls into this region pi by 2 ki ni akado ee value ki madhya vachela chesan ankonde appude em avutadi ante then uh, you can see that uh, the the beta l function is a negative number and in that scenario what happens is uh, you your input behaves like a so if it is greater than pi by 2 it behaves like a capacitive load అంటే ఏంటి సార్ ఇది కెపాసిటర్ లా పని చేస్తుంది అంటే అదే చెప్తున్నాను ఇన్పుట్ దగ్గర ఒక కెపాసిటర్ వోల్టేజ్ కరెంట్స్ ఎట్లా అయితే మెయింటైన్ చేస్తుందో అంటే దిస్ ఐ కెన్ రైట్ ది ఈక్వల్ అండ్ నెట్వర్క్ లైక్ దిస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ కెపాసిటర్ సింపుల్ అంటే ఒక కెపాసిటర్ టెర్మినల్స్ దగ్గర వోల్టేజ్ కరెంట్స్ ఎట్లా అయితే మెయింటైన్ చేస్తుందో ఈ ఈ సెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ వైర్ విచ్ ఇస్ సింప్లీ షార్ట్ సర్క్యూటెడ్ వైర్ ఆ షార్ట్ సర్క్యూటెడ్ వైర్ కూడా కెపాసిటర్ లో బిహేవ్ చేస్తుంది సార్ కెపాసిటర్ అంటే ప్లేట్స్ ఉండాలి కదా ఇక్కడ ప్లేట్లు ఏవి ఛార్జ్లు ఏవి అంటే ఏమి లేవు అందుకే చెప్పాను ఏం తీరు చెప్తున్నప్పుడు ఏం చెప్పానంటే యు డోంట్ బిలీవ్ దాట్ డోంట్ కీప్ కెపాసిటర్ అంటే ప్లేట్లు ఉండాలి ఇండక్టర్ అంటే వైర్ వైండ్ అయి ఉండాలి అవన్నీ నోషన్ వదిలేయండి ఎందుకంటే హై ఫ్రీక్వెన్సీస్కి వెళ్ళాక ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ద కాన్సెప్ట్ కెపాసిటర్ ఇండక్టర్ అన్న పదాలు కాదు కెపాసిటెన్స్ ఇండక్టెన్స్ అన్న పదాలకు ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఎక్కువ ఉంటుంది అని చెప్పాను సో ద ఎబిలిటీ టు హోల్డ్ ఛార్జ్ ఆర్ వేర్ ద వోల్టేజ్ అండ్ కరెంట్ హ్యాస్ ఎ రిలేషన్షిప్ లైక్ దిస్ right you know that the capacitor if it's inductor voltage and current are like this j omega into l into i or if it is a capacitor we had the voltage relation like this 1 by j omega s into i and the anti voltage ki current ki madhya 90 degrees lag unde landi oka relationship establish cheste akkada voltage effects ante akkada inductive effects unnai lagapothe akkada capacity effects unnai ani cheppochu whether the voltage is leading the current or whether it is lagging the current by 90 degrees you can decide what kind of effect you are having whether you are having uh, capacitive effect or whether you are having uh, inductive effect so oka okay, capacitance ni develop cheyali ante it doesn't mean that you need to put a plates there and you have to do 
in order to create a capacity effect you need to just create that lag 90 degrees lag then you definitely have that uh, capacity effect so that is how you need to visualize capacitance and inductance when you're designing those high frequency circuits okay so you could have a short circuit just the line short circuit just it is behaving like a capacitor or an inductor and interestingly once an uh, thing can also happen uh, or maybe we'll see it afterwards but right now you can see that your zn can change with different values if beta l say for example is exactly equal to uh, pi by 2 pi by 2 this kind of pi by 2 this kind of the pi by 2 of the land probably pi by 2 is a danger spot uh i'll take pi if i take uh, beta l is equal to pi what happens jaden zero 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 button okay and uh, if beta and beta and and beta is the propagation constant which is nothing but 2 pi by lambda and if i cancel out this l and l and pi and pi that means if l is equal to lambda by 2 and and you operate just in a frequency for example if you are operating at a frequency of uh, uh, let me say you are operating at a frequency of 1 gigahertz for 1 gigahertz what will be the value of lambda and thus than taru tell me in centimeters yes you take the velocity is the light velocity probably 3 into 10 to the power 30 centimeters 30 centimeters sir 30 centimeters okay say for example let us assume that right now the wave is also traveling at this velocity on the line then uh, if i take 30 cm is the uh, and for example if i take a line which is exactly 15 cm ante nen ikkada oka 1 gigahertz source pettanu source petti oka 15 cm wire petti uh, short circuit chesan ankonde what happens is the input impedance also behaves like a short circuit ante adi short ayipothadu okay so you can see that by changing the length the of the line i can get different values of impedances here there is another interesting property regarding this we'll talk it we'll talk about it in the coming slides but let me go with an another example okay that is uh, that is nothing but um, okay 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 so right so that is nothing but open circuit line so for an open circuit line and and it log wire iskana na na and i just left it open okay ln wire undi say for for now let us assume it is lossless and this line here is just left open so it is open circuited so now what happens to the input impedance so input impedance formula is always z not into zl plus jz not so lossless line kaabatti jz not vachin tan times of uh, beta times of the length l divided by z not plus j z l tan beta so id open circuit ante z l anta iskovali in front z l tends to in front iskunte z not by j tan beta yes you need to take yes you need to take it tends to infinity so numerator denominator lo you can take z l common and again you can put limit z l tends to infinity nana so if you do that i think you basically end up with uh, z not into so i think you get divided by zl here uh, maybe i'll write the equation so you can write this equation as z not into i can bring out zl common so it is 1 plus j z not by zl tan beta l divided by uh z not by z l plus j times of tan beta l so now what you will do you will put limit z l tends to infinity you will end up with an answer of z not by j tan beta l 1 by j times of tan beta l right so you get minus j times of z not cot beta l so these are the most famous expressions usually used many times by people okay i will dealing with transmission lines or questions in transmission lines so for an open circuit so uh, the input impedance is zn 
is actually equal to minus j z not cot beta l and of course because it is a cot function it can be positive and negative so what i can tell you is an open circuit you can just simply take a wire which is open circuited and you can change the length of the wire which is comparable to wavelength and then you can still make capacitive and inductive effects okay so this is what you will see in most of your designs so low frequencies lo memalni filters design cheyamannar ankonde either you design a filter like this or you design a filter like this okay out of this one is low pass filter one is high pass filter ed antar high pass second sir second one is what high pass second one is high pass filter yes sir and this is low pass you can simply sir. see and at lower frequencies inductor is a short circuit and the capacitor becomes an open circuit so whatever voltage is coming will be going throw it out into the output so you can say the lower frequencies are going and the higher frequencies are attenuated because at high frequency uh the inductor becomes an open circuit okay so the same thing goes here so this becomes a high pass and this is a maybe not a uh uh you wonder the cut off might not be sharp for this uh this kind of filter it it varies very smooth like this okay so then bandwidth either it will smooth get it make inka sharp cut off kaval and end ante inka ilanti ilanti sections inka additional ga padtaru ఇలాగే ఎంత ఆర్డర్ ఫిల్టర్స్ అని వస్తూ ఉంటాయి ప్రాబబ్లీ చేశారేమో ఫిల్టర్ డిజైన్స్ చేశారా ఫస్ట్ ఆర్డర్ ఫిల్టర్ డిజైన్ ఫస్ట్ ఆర్డర్ డిజైన్ లో పాస్ ఓకే ఓకే ఐ థింక్ ఎంత ఆర్డర్ అంటే ఇంకా అట్లాంటి సెక్షన్స్ చాలా ప్లేస్ చేసి చేస్తాము సో ఫిల్టర్స్ అన్నవి ట్రాన్స్ రిసీవర్ ఆ చెప్పండి సార్ ఇందాక ఓపెన్ సర్క్యూటెడ్ కేస్ లో ఒకల డైలెక్ట్రిక్ కండక్టెన్స్ ఉంటే అది కూడా ఇంక్లూడ్ చేయాలి కదా సార్ అంటే మనం యా అంటే నేను ఇక్కడ అదే సినారియో సినారియో యా డిజైన్ చేసేటప్పుడు అవన్నీ యూస్ చేసుకుంటాం డిజైన్ చేసేటప్పుడు అన్ని కన్సిడర్ చేయాలి ప్రస్తుతానికి అసలు ఐడియల్ గా కూడా ఒకవేళ అలాంటి సినారియో ఉంటే వీఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ ఓపెన్ సర్క్యూట్ కూడా ఇండక్టివ్ కెపాసిటీ ఎఫెక్ట్స్ వస్తున్నాయని చెప్పడం కోసం చెప్పాం బట్ ఇన్ ద ఐడియల్ సినారియో ద డైలెక్ట్రిక్ ప్లేస్ ఎ వెరీ బిగ్ రోల్ బికాస్ ఇఫ్ ద వోల్టేజ్ ఇస్ హై దెర్ ఇస్ అ ఛాన్స్ ఆఫ్ డైలెక్ట్రిక్ బ్రేక్ డౌన్ and your power handling capability depends upon it so prati wire meda enta voltage padithe anta voltage pampichala daniko limit untadi so power handling capability antam so avanni dielectric properties meda depend avutayi so avi ko maybe vaatiki sambandhinchina konni concepts kuda unnai coaxial lines cheppina appudu cheptanu probably right but uh, so you can see that filter designs chesadapudu ippudu prasan meeku year lo filter designs emi levu maybe rf and micro engineering course lo not to nail it but uh, uh, you will see some designs uh, filter designs which are made out of transmission lines akade endante oka low pass filter design cheyalante definitely ga meek inductor or capacitor kavalan telusu aithe inductor design cheyadaniki we will not use a wire and we will bond it we simply use a transmission line which is open circuited like this and here in parallel we will keep a transmission line which is also open circuited like this or we use shorts short circuited lines depending upon usually shorts vadam open vadtu untam there is a reason because pc me the pcb me the fabricate chesinappudu short circuit ante you need to uh, drill holes into the pcb so holes drill cheyadam kante open circuit odaledam easy kabatti usually we go with that kind of uh, analysis but sometimes power handling capability or one of your friend was saying dielectric breakdowns any consider cheyadam kosam maybe use short circuited lines also but thing is when you design this kind of filters on your pcb high frequencies lo mottani pcb me design chestaru design chese tappudu capacitor lo inductor lo ante probably they don't use uh, this plate uh, and uh, woundings and all okay they use uh, the transmission lines itself as inductors and capacitors okay so very rarely probably on an ic version of it or so then you see a different kind of formats but uh filter designs have you seen appudu you don't see uh, uh, inductors or capacitors placed on the ante uh, separate ga lumped elements emi place chair they use the transmission lines itself uh, in order to get achieve this kind of uh, inductive and capacitive properties and they achieve filtering from there 
okay so this is uh, open circuit line uh, right and um, if you look into say for example if the load is purely reactive ante nen connect chesina load na daggara oka itla line undi okay ee line ki nen connect chesina load jdl anadi is purely reactive ante there is no resistance to it so something like uh, for example jdl is j50 or jdl is j100 or something like that there is no resistance to it if that is a scenario my question is not the what is the input impedance adagatlan nenu what will be the reflection coefficient at a load load the reflection coefficient ent untadi ante i can see that the reflection coefficient at the load is jdl minus z0 divided by jdl plus z0 okay that is jxl minus z0 divided by jxl plus z0 so if you assume a lossless line this number looks like uh, a plus uh, a minus jb divided by a plus jb right atlane kadandi so whose magnitude so i can say that if you ask me what is the magnitude of the reflection coefficient the value is always equal to 1 okay yeah, do someone have a question okay srinivas okay so the magnitude of reflection coefficient is 1 this is one property which we'll use while dealing with smith charts and all but anyways i'll revisit that at that point also so anyways we'll uh, we'll go back to something uh, uh, great this okay so say for the one property on the transmission line is i can say that the characteristic impedance repeats for every lambda by 2 length ante nenu antanu ante say if i have a transmission line so let me take a transmission line which is of a load zl if the length of the line is exactly equal to lambda by 2 ante meer ikkada pettina source create chese voltage and current waves uh, a frequency lo ite oscillate avutne dan but if you know the lambda and if the length of the line which you have taken is exactly equal to the lambda divided by 2 then the input impedance zn will be exactly equal to zl ikkada em undo adhe repeat avutadi and this happens every time so if you take another lambda by 2 line again okay inkoka lambda by 2 line teeskunnaru ankonde ippudu ikkada input impedance enta ante malli zl le vastadi so why that happens and but because of your formula okay because if you put the length of the line as lambda by 2 because you know beta is what beta ante i can replace it with 2 pi divided by lambda so lambda lambda gets cancels out and you get tan pi so if it is tan pi so it is zero you can see this this cancels out and z not z not cancels out and you get an answer equal to zl so that means for every lambda by 2 distance whatever impedance is there at the end of the line the same impedance will repeat again okay ante input input dagara ante impedance kanipistu untadi so that is what we have seen before ante enti oka vaal naaku if i had a short circuit here and if this length of the line is lambda by 2 then at the input also i see an input impedance which is short circuit which is zero but for example if it is an open circuit here then at the input also i see an open circuit which is infinity if it is line length is lambda by 2 okay that is one property but the most interesting property is this one that if the line length is lambda by 4 okay then we say that the normalized impedance is inverted ante meaning ento chuddam so what do you mean by normalized impedance ante uh, all impedances on the line or any impedance that we deal with is basically divided with the characteristic impedance okay ante a impedance unna dan characteristic impedance tho divide chestan ankonde aa cheste vachina value ni normalized impedance an pilustu untam okay so say for example uh, what is a normalized impedance of the load load normalized impedance anta ante zl divided by z0 anamata what is the character normalized characteristic impedance ante anta ante z0 divided by z0 which is equal to 1 okay so if the length of the line is chosen as lambda by 4 so if i put lambda by 4 here beta ante en iskochu 2 pi divided by lambda so i get tan pi by 2 so tan pi by 2 goes to infinity so what i can do is i can take tan pi by 2 common okay and i can uh, put limit uh, tan pi by means that value uh, tends to zero means tends to infinity tan pi by 2 tends to infinity and you can see that the other values goes to zero okay uh 
okay so i mean uh, you get 1 by so tan 1 by tan when you take tan by by 2 as common so you get 1 by infinity so which becomes equal to 0 so these terms goes out and the remaining term is jz0 and zl so if you see this you will be left with z0 square by zl and in the end what is input impedance in this line the input impedance is nothing but z0 square divided by zl so I can rearrange these terms and then I can rearrange this term. So I have an equation like this. Zn is equal to Z0 square divided by Zl. So in this case, we can take Z0 and this way. So Zn by Z0 is equal to Z0 square by Zl. Or Zn by Z0 is equal to 1 by Zl by Z0. And right. Rastha, what is Zn by Z0? So input impedance is Z0 that divides. That is nothing but the normalized impedance. And what is ZL by Z0? It is nothing but the normalized load. And in and if I know the value of the normalized load impedance, what is the input impedance? And it is nothing but reverse of it, 1 by 1 by other. Why this is an interesting one? Is anything interesting? And say, for example, Miru, okay, a board this corner, a board me the edo, uh, breadboard and gunamo, a breadboard me the mere the experiment perform just now. So, we will connect the wire to the experiment to the circuitry. So, what is the answer? What is the answer? What is the Yes, I uh, put disconnect type in the right? breadboard connection, sir. Uh, breadboard connection in Japan would disconnect type in the right? okay, uh, probably we're having this net issue. Okay, then maybe we'll uh, we'll continue this interesting session in the next class. Okay. Huh? Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask, or else uh, the students can leave. I think the internet is not stable.